think we are live. Let's have a look. Ooh, we are live. Okay, amazing. Hi, everybody. Hello and welcome. I've not done this on a laptop for like over a year, so I'm just going to see whether this is all... You know, when you just kind of like, what's actually going on here? Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. I can see myself now. That's good. <laughs> Do me. Hello and welcome, everybody. Welcome to Ascension to Love with Alice. Welcome to this week. At a glance, we are going to be looking at the wonderful uh, week commencing Monday the of November all the way through to the 7th. We're going to be calling in the Archangels um, and just seeing what cosmic guidance we have um, coming in to help support us this week, help support our ascension process, help support what we might be going through on our own individual journeys and that of the collective. Before we do get started, I just wanted to do a massive shout out because on Friday, the 5th of November, the wonderful Radiant Melissa Virtue and I are doing a wonderful um, soul alchemy healing workshop. We are going to be resurrecting that column of light that runs through us, working with that wonderful Samhain portal that is open right now, the super new moon in Scorpio. There's a lot of fantastic energy. The link is in this description box or in the bio, depending on where you're watching this video. And if you're not yet signed up to my email list, please go to aliceheath.com. Um, and sign up there because that's where you get notified for all the early bird offers and all the other events because we've got some really we've got some cracking ones coming up for November so I'm just gonna say um but without further ado let's have a look here let's have a look at what we have coming through from the Archangels so I mean the first of the November the first we have that first um we have the 111 codes coming in, right? That's that make a wish. That's that let's start to manifest. Let's really be conscious of our vibration because what we are wanting to bring into physical reality, we have that space to do it today. You know, last week, at the end of last week, we had um, some really quite powerful solar flares, which may have knocked us off six for a few days. Um, but now they've all sort of integrated and we've just got this clean energy, this clean slate to really go, okay, what is it we want to manifest? What is it we want to bring in? You know, we've done a lot of clearing. We've done a lot of really, uh, of hard work, really. We've done a lot of really awesome stuff. So, um, it's really interesting when we, um, tune into the numerology of, of the weeks and how the flow, uh, tends to move and tends to go. And then by the end of the week, we have a new moon in Scorpio on the 4th, right? So, um, that's Thursday the 4th, Friday the 5th, depends on where you are in the world. Um, clocks in the UK have already fallen back an hour, so there is less of a time difference between the states and here, if you change your clocks, that is. Um, so it's all very interesting because in this week we have this really fascinating, um, it's kind of like this between time, this liminal state, right? And the liminal, um, the liminal part of it comes from that, you know, that sour and that Halloween energy, you know, um, the portal that we're in, but then with that Scorpio sun, that Scorpio moon, we've got so much space to really clear on some very deep karma. You may even be noticing in your dreams that you'll have people from your past coming back, people that um, thought you've healed, um, you know, people that you've um, feel that you may have like healed relationships with, they may be coming back in your dreams just to really tie up loose ends there and really ascend any uh, previous vibrations. Um, so that's really, really interesting as well. Um, but let's have a little look, see which archangels are coming in here. Let's have a little, let's have a little look. Okay, we have Archangel Raphael coming in first and foremost. Okay, the beautiful Archangel Raphael. Um, so the Archangel of abundance, of healing, of true health, right? Of alignment of the third eye as well. He opens the third eye. He works with the heart chakra, you know, um, what a wonderful archangel to start this reading with, right? What a wonderful archangel. We've also got Archangel Mary. Wow, okay. So, depending on how you work with archangels and how you connect with them, a lot of people actually see these two beautiful beings as uh, twin rays, right? As kind of like the beautiful divine counterparts of each other, as the feminine energy, the masculine energy of that healing, that abundance, that nurturing, that um, 
wonderful um, Mary energy, the Archangel Mary, that beautiful greeny blue um, color of her auric field. She really comes in to help us heal any uh, any inner child wounds, any subtleties, um, bring compassion, open our heart space. And paired with Raphael as well, you know, you've got that abundance energy coming in really strongly. So it feels like this week could actually be a very, very powerful week for um, for just overall complete healing, right? Um, so it actually makes me really happy that <laughs> because of the workshop that Melissa and I are doing <laughs> on the Friday, because it's actually, it's very much paired with both the divine masculine and feminine and really healing those fragmented, uh, fragmented parts. So, um, and ascending those bits. So I love that we've got Raphael and Mary both coming in here to bring that unity, to bring that, uh, the yin to the yang, to bring the above and below, right? That wholeness. I think that's really, really beautiful. Um, let's see here. Let's pull out another Archangel just for the end of the week. And I'll get some more cards um, as I go along here just to bring further depth and clarity. But it's so, it's so weird going live on a laptop. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll do this going forward. I might continue to use my iPad. Um, <laughs> it's just really strange to kind of not see me on a um, on the camera as much. I think I need to have a little play around with it a bit more. But anyway, um, good time for learning things. And then we have Archangel Mallory coming in. Wow. Oh, okay. So I love Archangel Ma Mallory. She is. She's that Archangel of the mysteries in a certain sense, in the feminine mysteries, right? Um, all three of these, by the way, I've done a free meditation on my YouTube channel. If you go to the Archangel series playlist on there, they've all got their own unique um, meditation. They're getting to know them. So if you are curious as to um, you know connecting with them a little bit further. We did a meditation for each three of these, but um, Archangel Mallory, she really allows us to step into our power in a really sovereign way, in a really powerful way. She really um, works with the heart womb connection. She works with that feminine, uh, the feminine mysteries of the world, because what's really interesting is it's, you know, we're, we've been speaking about this rise of the feminine Christ, right? The rise of the um, divine feminine for for a few years now, you know, and um, she's been getting more and more strong, more and more powerful. And then I get asked sometimes, what about the masculine? Now, what's really interesting is that it's the divine feminine who births, she rebirths the divine masculine, right? So as she expands, so does he. So I love that we've got Mallory coming in here because she will remind us exactly who it is that we are she will remind us what is happening up here in our um, in our mastery lifetime she will remind us of those gifts of those talents that we may have forgotten in this incarnation she will help us tune into those timelines right because all of time is happening right now you know it is this wonderful kind of a loop and spiral right it's not linear at all um we just perceive it that way as humans because it's easier for us to perceive it that way um, but that's that's not the case at all, you know. Um, so she really helps us tune into those um, those gifts and those um, higher timelines, and I really really adore that. And you know, I, I was really excited because this month I actually had a bit of a reshuffle with uh, some of the services that I offer, right? some of the one to one offerings. Um, been listening to what people have been asking for and tuning into the guidance and the collective and where we're going and. Um, and I offered, uh, or I updated my uh, my services on my website, and there's this really wonderful quantum manifestation um, session that we offer now, where we actually go in and clear a lot of the blocks in the Akashic Records, and then we go into uh, the halls of Amenti to bring in whatever manifestation that's up there in your vortex, and help bring it down quicker into um, into the physical world in a much more efficient and flowing way. Right, so they're very very powerful sessions. So do have a look at those. Um, but Archangel Mallory really is supporting that. We also have some wonderful um, ascension soul like soul growth ascension guidance sessions where we actually go into your soul origin and we have a look at what your soul's been doing throughout all the other lifetimes and what's kind of playing a role and playing a part and they're really fun guidance sessions as well so if that calls to you have a little look but let's have a look at what energies we've got coming in with those wonderful archangels that's going to really influence our week so let's have a little uh, a little goosey ganders here okay so we've got fall into my arms so look at this we've got can you see that? There we go. Let's fall into my arms card. 
right? This is about surrendering. This is about um, bringing opposites into alignment, right? Because we live in a world of polarity right so you know when we have one thing on one side we have the exact opposite on the other so that's like masculine feminine hot cold light dark right they're they're polar opposites right and um and it's good to have that but it also means that the pendulum can kind of swing a little bit right and what we really want um is to find that neutral balance to integrate both and what this card is bringing in and reaffirmed really by having Raphael and mary come up at the start but what this really shows us, right, you know, is that when we open ourselves up to um, to experience and to witness without judgment what is showing up in our life, we can, instead of adding our emotion, adding our fear perhaps to it or adding an unreclaimed part to it, such as an unreclaimed inner child, right, that might be a bit worried about something, we can witness it and go, Oh wow look at that look what I've created and then we can consciously create something else we can consciously manifest something else right the law of attraction is always at play and I think uh, everyone that watches my channel knows that um, and what's really cool about that is that you know it's, it's just it's instant you know it's absolutely instant and uh, the emotions that we have you know we are shown immediately whether we are you know flying high or whether we're kind of down in the dumps or if we're uncertain right as to how we're feeling we just you know it shows us because it brings us more of whatever it is that we're experiencing in that moment right whatever we are emoting in that moment so if you're feeling really happy and really joyful you're going to get more of that and it will reflect on all your experiences and if you're for example at work and you're not sure whether you enjoy what you're doing or this that and the other you're going to be shown by the physical experiences because the law of attraction will bring those coordinating parts to your physical reality right so to have that surrender <clears throat> To have that surrender is really really interesting and we do have this water your garden card <laughs> i love that phrase water your garden um so we do have this water nourishment um connect with water we are in scorpio season scorpio is that deep 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 diving water sign very in tune with the magnetic the mystery the um the secrets right behind the veil and what i love is that the second card that came out after that was lift the veil so we've really got here to um, we've really got here to connect with um, to connect with ourselves with the water that runs through us we are made of like 80% water right you know connect with water as um, as the rain I don't know about you but it's been raining non-stop here <laughs> you know since Scorpio season started where I live and um, and that's beautiful right that's really beautiful because water carries that Christ light energy right which Archangel Mallory, that Christ light energy, feminine Christ, you know. Um, so to have this card coming in to say it's okay to rest, it's important to rest, it's actually very active for us to rest, if that makes sense, it's, it's a progression to rest, right, when we need it, because we're integrating then. You know, we can't always go gung-ho, straight, um, straight forward in a masculine nature because then we're ignoring the feminine, then we're not in balance, then we can't receive, right? Because that's the feminine to do. So when we actually rest, when we rest when the body is tired, when we pause in our day, when we go with the rhythms and flows of the day and how we're feeling rather than trying to maintain it with caffeine or whatever, you know, we actually open ourselves up to receive everything that we're working towards, which is really delightful. It's what we need. It's what we want. It's what we desire. And then we have this lift in the veil, right? You know, we um, by the end of the week, we're going to be questioning things. You know, there's going to be things showing up and we get to go, huh, who knew? Because once again, it's that Scorpio influence. The super new moon as well. And it's super because it's closer, right? So when it's the super moon, it's because it's closer to the earth. Um, but the super new moon in Scorpio is bringing that lunar energy of Scorpio, right, as well as the solar energy of Scorpio. So the solar energy is our DNA upgrades, it's how we show up physically, mentally. The lunar energy is how we show up on an emotional. It highlights our emotions, our inner child as well. The the moon is wonderful for actually highlighting where our inner child wounding is, right? So how you connect with the moon and what you believe and think about the moon is actually very indicative of where the woundings of our own inner child is. So I just thought I'd throw that in there because that's always a fun tidbit. But um, 
with that double Scorpio energy and the closeness of the moon, lots of things are going to be highlighted. The veil is going to be lifted in so many ways, right? So it's going to be very exciting to see what is unveiled to you inside, within you, within your inner workings, how you feel about things. By the end of this week, you're going to know a lot clearer where you stand with things in your life, whether something should stay or should go, you know. Scorpio is ruled by both Pluto and Mars. In traditional astrology, it's Mars, which is that direction, that action, that masculine energy. And in nowadays, astrology ruled by Scorpio, which is birth, death, rebirth. So by the end of the week, it's, it's going to be very much whatever you're ready to let go of. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel it ready to go... Thank you, but goodbye. So you can create space for the new. And that's what new moons are all about as well. You know, just before the new moon, we are releasing. We're in that waning moon. We release the energy, right? We release the resistance, release the blocks. It is a great time for Akashic sessions, for karma clearing sessions, right? It is a great time to get clarity. And then after that, when we actually get to the new moon portal on the 4th and the 5th, we are then able to plant the seeds in our garden, right? in that wonderful soil we are able to plant those seeds right and really nourish them let them grow unencumbered uninhibited you know let's see what guidance we have to really maximize in the week this is like I say, it's so interesting doing this on a laptop <laughs> it's saying i need to change how i am um, it's saying i need to change a few things for the next time so the video doesn't do that <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i love it we have the fairies coming in the fae realm okay i love this card the fae realm the fairies they are playful they are cheeky they are mischievous they remind us to find enchantments in things they remind us to find joy in things they remind us to play they remind us to get wet and to go outside in the rain and to jump in the puddles they remind us to connect with our inner child they remind us to uh, paint outside the lines they remind us to roll in the dirt roll on the floor you know they remind us to breathe deeply to stop and smell the roses the fate are reminding us of that and that is really going to help this week it's going to help with everything that's coming through everything that you've received so far on the bottom of the deck i'm just going to say here on the bottom of the deck we have the silver card which is the goddess card right so that's a very powerful energy um underlying the whole week right um so this insight coming through you know and it's interesting because you know having had have, we are in the week of Samhain, and whenever there is a turn of the wheel, Imolc, Samhain, Mayburn, Lunasa, whenever, Halloween as it's known is Samhain, right? Um, there's actually a few dates for that. You know, it's not just on the 31st of October, as is the Gregorian calendar, um, as that says, but also there is Lunar Samhain, right? Solar Samhain, right? So Lunar Samhain is... Um, the actual turns of the wheel are in alignment with the sun, where the sun is. The sun dictates that the sun is the calendar, right? Um, so the actual solar date, you know, is actually later on in the week, as is the lunar one. So it's really interesting because with that, we still, with that being said, we still have this very um, powerful portal of Halloween of Samhain, right? Which is lifting that veil so much so, so that we can actually connect with our ancestor, ancestors, connect with other timelines, connect... Um, release, rebirth, um, thank, you know. Um, and traditionally as well, Samhain is very much about, um, you know, it's the promotion really to the wise woman, right? To that, um, you know, we're moving into, uh, into the West, aren't we? We're moving into that watery energy, the, the dark half of the year, right? Where we go inwards you know, where we tune into our inner wisdom. So having that goddess card show up, it's very powerful, you know. So um, she reminds us, you know, to listen to your intuition, to listen to um, your gut feeling, to tune in and allow yourself to be still enough to notice the nuances within you, to notice how you're feeling about things. Because when we're go, 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 and we don't, uh, stop and we don't slow down we don't notice if our body is telling us something we don't notice if our emotions are telling us something because we're not we're not present so 
the goddess is really reminding us to be present as well, right? I'm also um, feeling that connection to the earth star chakra, which is the chakra below your feet connecting you with the earth, right? When we are, um, when we are walking our path, when we want to walk our higher path, we have to be connected with our earth star. There mustn't be a block between the root and the earth star. If you feel lonely, if you feel like you don't belong, if you feel like you're a star seed and you're like, why am I on earth right now? That's because there is a blockage around your earth star and your roots, right? And when that is connected, we realize that we are both from the stars, but then the earth is also a star, right? And when we realize that, that is when we actually start to understand why we are here. And then we don't want to get off the roller coaster. We want to put our arms up and go, woo you know, and have a wonderful time. Um, creating, co-creating, manifesting, doing all the wonderful stuff that is going to be very, very accessible this week. Because like I say, we start the week with a one 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 portal, which is manifesting at its best, right? Making that wish and planting the seeds, thinking about it, because all through this month, especially through into the 11-11, um, even all the way up through to the full moon, and there's going to be some very powerful events on the full moon that I will be co-hosting, both on the 18th and 19th, so do stay tuned for that. And look at that, lucid dream. Just to re-emphasize what we've just said, lucid dream. This card is about the opportunities that are around us, the awareness. When we have awareness, we can co-create, right? If anyone um, has experienced a lucid dream before, it's kind of like, you know, you're in your dream time. You're aware that you're in your dream time so you can change it, but you're still dreaming, right? So it's still very magical, you know? It's like you can just start flying if you want to start flying, for example. What I love about this card and how this card just came out of the deck is that you know it came out when we were talking about co-creating about intentionally co-creating because the waking life is the great mother's dream we just spoke about the earth and being that mother energy being that uh, we've got that mother energy coming in with archangel mary right you know and that goddess energy and when we are awake we are in the great mother's dream and when we are in the great mother's dream we can still be lucid dreaming if we if we looked at our awake time as a lucid dream how would you do things differently right because there's lots of metamorphosis wanting to happen this week there's lots of golden opportunities if we slow down and remember to play and to rest and to receive all those things of the feminine Archangel Raphael and Archangel Mary are saying you know it's time to heal bring yourself into balance I'm hearing that very strongly right now bring yourself into balance you owe it to yourself right? You owe it to yourself. You are obligated to no one and to no thing, right? You are. You can do what you want to do. And we came here to experience this wonderful, wonderful Earth Star. So some very powerful messages here. I'm going to pull one dragon card just to kind of close up the reading. Um, I do just want to say thank you to everyone that is on my page, that is in my Facebook group. If you're not yet part of the Dream Temple, the link is in the description box. Do feel welcome to join. Uh, we usually do card readings on a Wednesday, so they're always fun to tune into and get yourself a message from your team of light and your angels. Uh, also ask a question if anyone has like questions about the mysteries, the law of attraction or anything like that. Um, but I just want to say thank you for everyone that stuck with this video to right now. I know it's been a bit jumpy, I think, judging by the messages that Facebook are giving me. <laughs> um, we'll see if we can fix that for next time. Um, and thank you for subscribing if you're watching this on YouTube. Right? So anyway, let's pull one final dragon card just to kind of bid us all farewell until next time. And on my YouTube, by the way, there is a month at a glance. So if you want to have a little cheeky peek at what's coming up this month cosmically and how it might uh, help you with whatever it is that you're wanting to do, then do feel welcome to check that out as well. I think I've tagged it in the box. Um, look at that, Earth and Air Dragon is the dragon that is coming out to say hello. Earth and Air, as above, so below, as below, so above, right? You know, um, perfect balance of heaven and earth. What have we literally been talking about today? You know, what we've been talking about on this call, it's that balance, that harmony, you know, staying grounded so that we can manifest. And that's exactly what this card actually says, is, you know, when we are grounded, um, we can ground the visions, we can ground the desires, we can bring them down from our vortex up above and bring them down into the physical. And to do that, we need to have our root chakra open and our earth star chakra open. 
right? So I'm going to leave that right there. If you need help uh, with those chakras, then feel welcome to send me an email at ascension at um, Feel welcome to reach out and um, yeah, I look forward to connecting with you. Thank you so much and I look forward to speaking with you soon. So many blessings. Mwah. Bye for now.